things everyone once again is Mota Mwanedi sharing the authentic truth brought to us by Zulula 100 and today the teaching we will share is going to be regarding Jesus Christ as an invention of white racist and slavers the proof so <clears throat> the personage of Jesus the so-called white savior the so-called Jesus Christ or the other name they will give him that white personage that fake guy with blue eyes, long hair, never existed. He was made up. It's an invention, a lie. And we shall go in the current class of the Bible to demonstrate that fact. We are sharing the truth, spreading the authentic truth brought to us by Zula 100, the only teacher. The time of liberation is here, is now. Knowledge. Matthew chapter 2, verse 14, it says, That night, Joseph left for new left for egypt with the child and mary his mother so here in the current classic bible you're told that that night joseph 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 who is not the uh, the father of the child but the adopted father of the child because in the confusion of some people they believe that joseph is the is is the father of that uh, that jesus left for egypt with the child so you're told here that joseph left with the child, which is that Jesus, and Mary, the mother of the child. So they together left for Egypt. Why? Because Herod, according to that, those, the same text, was trying to pursue and kill the child. <clears throat> In New Living Translation, it says, And... They stayed there until Herod dead, Herod's dead. This fulfilled. So here in Matthew, you're told that this fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet column. I called my son out of Egypt. So here you see those who have written the text, who has made up the who have made up this story, that so-called Matthew, who's that guy? <clears throat> he says they claim that. That happened, the fact that the three of them, Joseph, Egypt, Joseph, um, that so-called Jesus and Mary went to Egypt, was to fulfill a prophecy. The prophecy which says, I called my son, and they claimed that that son was that so-called Jesus, out of Egypt. <clears throat> now, first, when he says in verse 14 that they went to Egypt, but we know in Isaiah, this in the in the current class of the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 31, verse 1, Woo to those who go down to Egypt for help, come up. So here in Isaiah 31, 31, verse 1, you're told that woo to those who go to Egypt for help. But Joseph and the son, the so-called Jesus, and Mary, they went to Egypt to find refuge. So they went to Egypt to find help. But the same Bible tells you, woe to those who go. So woe to that same Jesus who went to Egypt to find refuge, to find help. <clears throat> As you can see, it's plagiarism. That's how you know that Jesus is a lie. It's an invention. Because he himself the action that they claim he did completely go against the same Bible they claim he came to fulfill the scriptures for. <clears throat> now, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 14, so he went up, took the child and his mother by night and withdrew to Egypt, comma, verse 15, where he stayed until the death of Herod. Period. This to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet out of Egypt, I call my son. Now, let's go to the second point here. In Matthew 2.15, you're told that this, this, all this action was to fulfill what the prophet said, I call my son out of Egypt. And where is that prophecy taken? Because when you read that, that means it is it should have been written somewhere. It is a prophecy. So let's go into prophecy and see exactly the context of that prophecy and see if that prophecy fully applied to that so-called Jesus to see if it is, is it, it is true. In Hosea chapter 11, verse 1, it says, 
when Israel was a child, comma. So here you're told, when Israel was a child, comma, I loved him, comma, him who? Israel. So we are addressing Israel, comma, out of Egypt, I called my son, period. So that's where the prophecy was taken, where that so-called Matthew, where the current class of the Bible has taken that prophecy and they, they have tried to centralize that prophecy and say that that prophecy was uh, for that so-called Jesus, that invention, because they made him up so to try to make his, the, their lies legitimate, they had to associate him with some prophecies. But let's see if that prophecy holds up fully. But in the prophecy, it says, when Israel was a child. So the prophecy says, Israel, I loved him. And called out, out of Egypt, I called my son. And the, that son is who? He's still referring to Israel. You see? But when they mention it in Matthew, they removed the first part. They removed the second part. They just said, out of Egypt, I called my son. They just copied that little place and tried to apply it. But when we read the context, the phrase, the sentence, because it's not even in the same sentence. There is a comma before. When Israel was a child, comma. So the prophecy is not over. The text is not over. The sentence is not over. I loved him, comma. I loved him who? Israel. Out of Egypt, I called my son, period. My son, the son, is still referring to Israel. Now, let's dive further. Let's read further to see the context. But the more I called Israel, verse 2, in Hosea chapter 11, verse 1, that's still the prophecy they claim applied to that so-called Jesus. But the more I called Israel, comma, you see, it still continue mentioning it's Israel is referring to. The far, the farther they departed from me, period. The farther they departed from me. They, it's who? It's Israel. We're referring to the people. We're referring to the Israelites. We're referring to them. That's why now it's mentioned them in plural. They, they, the farther they departed from me, period. They sacrificed to the balls. The balls. The Baals, that's the demons. So they, the Israelites, Israel, some of them, they, the son, who which is mentioned, that prophecy, sacrificed to Baals. That's, so if let's say they claim that the prophecy applied to that so-called Jesus, that means that Jesus sacrificed to those demons. You see? And burn incense to carved images, period. So show me then where in the story of the so-called Jesus, he sacrificed to the Baals and burned incense to carved images. Because if the prophecy applies to him, he should have done everything that the prophecy says. You see? So that's plagiarism, a lie, Christocentrism, Christo, Christocentricity. Because they try to associate what was said to an invented personage. And you see, when you read it fully, it doesn't add up. It doesn't hold up. It contradicts. It doesn't fit. So that was... The part. Now in Luke chapter 24, verse 28, because that Jesus, like I've mentioned, is a lie. And we're going to see in the current classic of the Bible that he has lied. So for those of you who claim that Jesus never lied, he never sinned, we're going to show you here in the current classic of the Bible where he lied. <clears throat> now this is regarding the resurrection. He says, Luke 24, verse 28. To put it in context, that's regarding the road to Emmaus. So when he says in um, 
verse 12 first. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb, and after bending down and seeing only linen clothes, he went away wondering to himself what had happened. So he was wondering what happened. <clears throat> that same day, in verse 13, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. Verse 14, they, they were talking to each other about everything that had happened. And they talked and deliberated. <clears throat> and verse 15, and as they talked and deliberated, Come up. Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, period. So now they're claiming Jesus resurrected and came along to talk to them. Verse 16. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Verse 17. He asked them, what are you discussing so intensely as you walk along? So that so-called Jesus asked them a question and they answer and so on. Now, we're going to go and see the lie. In verse 28, it says, As they approached the village where they were headed, so they were going somewhere and they were approaching. As they approached the village where they were headed, comma, he says in New Living Translation, Jesus acted as if he were going on. So he acted like he was going on. What is acted? He's acting like. So he was making something up. In Aramaic Bible in plain English, and they arrived at that village to which they were going, comma, and he was announcing to them how he was going to a distant place, period. So he announced here in Aramaic Bible in plain English, he announced to them how he was going to a distant place. New American Standard Bible. He gave the impression he was going further, farther. Literal Standard Version. He made an appearance of going on further. Young Literal Translation. And he made an appearance of going further. So... You're told here that he acted so he make it seem like he was going somewhere. So that's a lie. That's a lie. When you're acting in such a man in such a in such a way or in such a manner as to present a false image, or you're announcing as if you're going somewhere, but you're not. You're, you can say you're visually lying. And when he says announce so, that's why he, he presented to them as if he was going somewhere. So he was presenting to them a false image. He was putting, he wanted them to believe that he was going somewhere. He wanted them to think that he was going somewhere else. You see, he lied to them. He lied. So that Jesus is a liar because he himself is an invention, is a lie. Now, once again, another lie of that so-called Jesus. In John chapter 3, verse 13, English Standard Version, you're told that he says, No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, comma, the Son of Man. So here you're told that that so-called Jesus says that no one ascended to heaven into heaven. So no one went into heaven. No one was taken up to heaven. But in Hebrew chapter 11 verse 5, you're told, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life, comma, so that he did not experience death. Semicolon. He could not be found, comma, because God had taken him away, period. For before he was taken, he was commanded as one who pleased God. So here you're told in Hebrew 11.5 that Enoch was taken, was no longer, was taken away. God took him away because he pleased God. New Living Translation, it was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven, to heaven without dying. So, as you see here, New Living Translation, 
Enoch was saved, was taken into heaven. But that so-called Jesus come and says no one ascended to heaven. So he's contradicting the scriptures. He's contradicting what happened to Enoch. He's, contra he's contradicting history. Two Kings, chapter two, verse eleven. He says, "As they were talking along, ha, no, sorry, ha, as they were walking along and talking together, come up. Suddenly, a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them, come up. And Elijah went up to heaven in the whirlwind. So Elijah also was saved." And was taken up to heaven. So that Jesus is a liar. He doesn't know the scriptures. Because you would think that if the so-called Jesus was the so-called son of God. He, he, he should have known the scriptures. He should have known history. He should have known what happened to Enoch and what happened to Elijah. Now. Jesus is a liar. He doesn't know everything. He's limited. He doesn't even know the story of the prophets. Because he's made up. Those who have written his story made him up. So that's why he's saying things that don't hold up. And he doesn't fit into history. Now, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5, New International Version, it is written here. Therefore, comma, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, comma, but a body you prepared for me. So here you're told, those who have written the text, the Bible, they've tried to make him fit, again, that so-called Jesus, into the scriptures. And they say that when the Christ, they try to claim when Jesus came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, comma. But about a body you prepared for me. Now let's see where that is written. Because when it says, he said, that text, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body what you prepared for me, it's taken from somewhere. Now we go where it was taken. We go in Psalms chapter 40, verses 6 to 12. We shall read the context. Because every time they're going to try to say Christ was prophesied or Christ said this that was mentioned previously. Let's read the context of the prophet who have said those things or have written those, those things or have prophesied. In Psalms chapter 40 verse 6, it says, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, comma, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require, period. So that's where they've taken that passage and they try to say that, it is that so-called Jesus that said those things when he came into the world. <clears throat> but the text doesn't stop here. It continues. The person who says those things continue. Who has, who's mentioning here, continue. The person who verse 6 refers to when he says, but... My ears you have opened, burnt offering and sins offering you do not require. When he says, my ears, that's the ears of someone. Let's see that someone, what does he say? What is his story? Verse 7, that I said, comma, I said, who is I say? That person who says, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened that person. Then I said, comma. So let's see if it is that Jesus. I am here, comma, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. Verse 8, I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. Verse 9, I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. Behold, I do not seal my lips as you O oh Lord, do know, verse 10, I have not covered up your righteousness in my heart. I have declared your, faith, your faithfulness and salvation. I have not concealed your loving, devotion, and faithfulness from the great assembly. Period. 
So Dapper, it doesn't stop here. It continues. Verse 11. O oh Lord, do not withhold your mercy from me. Your loving devotion and faithfulness would always guard me. Period. <clears throat> Verse 12. For evils without numbers surrounds, surround me. Semicolon. Surround me, that person still in the same context, still in the same passage. That person that so-called Jesus, that they try to say is Jesus, that is mentioned in Hebrew 10, 5. O oh Lord, do not withhold your mercy from me. Your loving devotion and faithfulness will always guard me. Verse 12, for evils without number surround me. My sin have overtaken me. Come. So here you're told, my sin, the sin of who? Of that per, the same person which Psalm 40, verse 6, which Hebrew 10, 5 mentioned. My sin have overtaken me. Come. So if you agree that Hebrew 10.5 5 says is that so-called Jesus that said those things, and it is him that it was prophesied about in Psalms 40, then that so-called Jesus also has sins. But the so-called fake pastors are they gonna say Jesus never sinned? My sins, plural, so many sins. So is a sinner that guy have overtaken me, come up, so that I cannot see, period. They are more than the hairs of my head, come up. So you're told here that that person which have said, sacrifice and offering you do not desire, that people try to claim that it was Jesus, that, that person, they, he says, they are more than the hair of my head, comma. They're his sins. My sins have overtaken me. So his sins has overtaken him. So he's completely corrupt. Verse 12, English Standard Version. For evils have encompassed me beyond numbers. My iniquity have overtaken me, comma, and I cannot see, semicolon, they are more than the hairs of my head, semicolon. My hurts fails me. My hurt, my heart fails me, period. New American Standard Bible 1977. For evil beyond numbers have surrounded me. My iniquities has, have overtaken me, comma. So that person had iniquities. You see, because they... They are very limited. They are very, they lack knowledge. Those who have put this, try to claim that it was that so-called Jesus, try to make him seem like he was the savior without sin and so on, and try to take some prophecy, some text in the, what they call the Old Testament, to make that so-called Jesus fit in the scriptures, but they didn't read the full context. So, you see, it doesn't add up. My iniquity have, taken, my, have overtaken me, so I am not able to see. They are more numerous than the hairs on my head, and my heart has failed me. Now, another place where the Christo, uh, Christocentrist, once again, Isaiah chapter 24, uh, chapter 42, verse 4. Isaiah 42, verse 4. English Standard Version, you're told. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth. So here you're told in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 4, that he will not grow faint or be discouraged. New International Version. He will not falter or be discouraged till he has established justice on earth. And some, some will say, will claim that that passage is regarding the so-called Jesus. Some fake pastors out there are going to claim that Isaiah 42 verse 4, it is about Jesus. Now, when we go in <clears throat> 
when we go in Psalms chapter 37 verse 28 it says for the Lord loved the just and will not forsake his faithful one period A New Living Translation, for the Lord loves justice, comma, and he will ne never abandon the godly. So here you're told also in Psalms chapter 37, verse 28, that the Lord, that God loves justice, and he will never, never abandon the godly. In, in uh, Berean Study Bible, you're told, will not forsake his saints. So in the scriptures you're told in Psalms 37 verse 28 that God, that the Lord doesn't forsake, doesn't abandon the godly, the saint, the just. Now, when we go in Matthew chapter 27 verse 46, he says, about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lima, lima sabachthani, which, mean, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Question mark. New Living Translation, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? So here in the Kranla Bible, you're told that that so-called Jesus says, that God has abandoned him. God has forsaken him. And he was asking. He was wondering. He was questioning. Why did God for, forsaken him? Has forsaken him? Why did God abandon him? But in the same scriptures, you're told that God never forsake. He's just, the pure, the saint. That's how you know that that so-called Jesus is not a saint. He's not a pure. He's not a prophet. Because God forsaken him. Has abandoned him. It's not just because it's made up is a lie. That's why it was abandoned. Now, regarding uh, uh, the discouragement in Isaiah 42 verse 4, it says, He will not falter or be discouraged. We agree. Psalms chapter 40 verse 12. It says, because they were trying to say that Psalms 40, because in Psalms 40 verse 6, they try to claim in Hebrew 10, 5, that that's what Jesus said. That sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared me. And that the same person, which Hebrew 10, 5, the same passage regarding sacrifice and offering, continue, because it is written in Psalms 40 verse 6. And it continue. In, so in Psalms 40, now Psalms 40, when we continue, verse 12, it says in the New Living Translation, For troubles surround me, too many to count, my sins pile up so high, I can't see my way out, period. They outnumber the hairs on my head, period. I have lost all courage, period. So you're told in Psalms 40, verse 12, New Living Translation, that the person who, who, also, who also says that sacrifice and offering you did not desire, that that person says that he has lost all courage. So if that person was the so-called Jesus, the prophecy of Isaiah 42 Verse 4 says that he will not be discouraged. But that person lost all courage. So he was discouraged. So that person could not have been Jesus. Jesus was, it, it wasn't prophesied about him. It's a lie. Every prophecy they try to claim that it was regarding Jesus. When we read the context, it doesn't apply to that invented personage. Because he was all made up. Jesus is a lie, is a falsification, is an invention. We have to wake up, wake up from the lie, from the false doctrine, 
from the religious lies. They forced some ancestors to rule, to worship that guy, to worship that white guy, to worship that white savior, to follow Christianity, Christianity, Christianism. They beat people to follow that. They spread that religion with fear, lies, with war, with oppression, with torture. They forced it. They forced it. So that's what we have to know the origin, the the how that belief began. How did it spread? How was it introduced? Who started to teach those things? And when you research regarding histories, those who have spread those were slavers. They were racist. They were killing people. They were killing black people, putting them in chain, enslaving many of some of them, many of them, forcing those the belief of that Jesus, forcing it. But now, many black people willingly follow that doctrine because either they're born in it or they believe in the lie. And when we teach them history, we teach them the truth, we reveal to them the origin of that belief, of that lie, of that religion, some of them act as if they're not listening. They are rebellious because they like the lie, they like the false doctrine have to wake up from ignorance. We have to stop believing the lies the other race have tried to force onto us. All religions are false. Before Christianity, black people already knew the Creator. If they claim that Christianity came 2,000 years ago, what did they do before that? We know that black people practiced the, the, the custom of circumcision. But the other race will claim, in the scriptures, they will claim no circumcision. It was introduced by Abraham. That Abraham was the father of circumcision. It was to him that that custom was given. It was to him and, and to his descendant. But before Abraham, black people knew circumcision. So where did they learn that? Where did they, who taught them that, that custom? Who taught them that law? Who taught them that ritual? If you're told in the current class of the Bible that that was the mark of the covenant for the people of God. How did black people know about that? How did they learn it? Because they practiced it way before white people came. Those are the proof in history. Those are the undeniable proof that they cannot remove, they cannot erase, they cannot subtract, they cannot lie about that. Black people knew the true creator. They knew the true Christ. They knew spirituality and not the religions. They knew the truth. They were the first on earth. It is not up to the other races to come and teach them regarding spirituality or to teach them about God. They were there before. It's their birthright. They are the elders. So the truth is being spread. Get out of all foreign religions. The truth is here. The truth text, because they've tried black people, the Bible is black people through history. That they, they changed, they tried to change the names 
tried to change the places, the names, the places of birth, and so on. They changed the colors of the, of the prophets. But the truth is established, is reestablished, is here. Biberta Tambale. The original text, the original scriptures. Black people through history. So that was the message, that was the teaching that white Jesus, once again, his lies are, are being exposed. And the truth is here. The time of liberation is here. The time of knowledge is here. So no longer follow those false doctrine, those fake pastors out there. No. The only teacher, Zula 100, is here to liberate us, teach us the path, the true path to salvation. Jesus Christ will never save you. He will never save you. Because it, it is a lie. It is an invention. And those who have invented him, who have tried to introduce him in history, didn't have your best interest in mind. They wanted to pillage you, oppress you, steal your your wealth, your resources. So for that, they had to blind you with a lie. And we see the result today. So all glory be to Lopa, the only and unique creator.